The steps that I'm seated on are the steps that go along the side of the house of Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the high priest during the time that Jesus was being uh, beaten and uh, brutally treated. And this is the house where he is being uh, questioned and Peter is in the courtyard a little bit to my right up over here where he would have been lingering and watching. This is the place that Jesus predicted that Peter would deny him three times and after the third time uh, the cock would crow. That is this place. These steps literally are the rocks that Jesus may have walked on. They are still in place where he would have been beaten horribly. He would have been suffering greatly. He was in a great deal of pain and actually was put into a little prison here for a little while. Plus he was under trial and questioned. But it's here that he's being questioned and he is at a, a point of incredible suffering. He is so much in pain that, you know, all of us would want to just lay down and die. But it's during that time that Peter denies him three times to a servant woman and to others. He denies that he knows Jesus. They're identifying him as a Galilean and he denies it, he denies it, he denies it. And then the cock crows. And when the cock crowed, Jesus literally turned and looked at Peter. Somewhere right over here, he turned around and looked back at Peter. And it said, Peter went out and wept bitterly. Peter went out and wept bitterly. It was at this point that Peter had a moment of self-realization. Earlier he had said that he wouldn't deny Jesus, that he would fight to the finish, that he would help usher in the messianic kingdom that was politically uh, to be something that resulted uh, in his mind, earthly overthrow of the Romans, so this fighter Peter. But at this moment he's in, in tremendous doubt because Jesus is suffering in a way that he didn't anticipate. Maybe he isn't the Messiah. He's questioning, he's doubting. But when that cock crowed and when Jesus turned back and looked at him, Peter went out and wept bitterly. He suddenly realized he'd been in a deluded state, that Jesus was who he said he was, that he needed to trust him. But the whole pain that Peter was in, after Christ was crucified and buried and resurrected, he appeared numerous times to the disciples. Peter had denied him. But when those appearances happened, Peter and Jesus never talked. There comes this moment later where Peter says, I'm going fishing. And I believe that what Peter meant is that Jesus has marginalized me. He said I was going to be the rock, that I was going to be the one upon whom the church is built. But because I denied him, Jesus wants nothing to do with me. He's not even talked to me during these appearances. Jesus has perhaps not even looked at Peter. And so Peter says, I'm going fishing. And later, you remember, they're out fishing, and this voice from the shore and this figure says, cast your nets out on the other side. And Peter recognizes a replay of how it was when they first were called to follow Jesus. And he said, it's the Lord. And he dives in the water, swims to the shore. But I think during that time, he's wondering, what am I going to say to Jesus? We haven't talked. I've denied him. I believe there's tremendous nervousness in Peter. The, the disciples come ashore with this great catch. And Peter's the one that's helping count, I believe. But Peter has unfinished business, and Jesus knows it. And he knows, Jesus does, what's going on in the soul of, of Peter. And that's when Jesus says, Peter, do you agape me? Do you love me? Peter didn't want him to ask him that. He said, I phileo you, Lord. I'm your friend. He would not say that he loved him with an unconditional love because he denied him right here in this spot. And Peter is making a decision. I'm never going to make a false commitment again. So Jesus says, do you love me, Peter? Agape. Peter won't answer him. You know, I phileo you, Lord. And then the Lord says, do you even phileo me? He says, Lord, you know my heart. You know my heart. Friend, is there unfinished business between you and Christ? Do you believe that Christ has just pushed you aside? Where there is sin, grace abounds. I'm going to tell you that the Lord wants you to come to a self-realization. He wants you to go out and weep bitterly over what you've done. You must not dismiss the seriousness of what you've done. But don't you let that defeat you. The Lord is going to say, do you love me? Will you follow me? Yes, I saw you. I looked at you. But I have a purpose for you. Don't let your past, even your denial of Christ, stop you from making the decision to follow Christ in the days ahead. Make that decision now. Make that decision now.